Good brothers and sisters, let's talk Israel for a second. The latest update from Israel, all the things going down, what people are saying, what's news that is relevant to us, that are prophecy watchers and waiting on the rapture of the church. The Israel Supreme Court showdown over the controversial judicial reform is again up in high gear and in the media. After months of protests against the hardline Israeli government's highly controversial overall, the historic showdown is taking place right now. All 15 Supreme Court judges are convening for the first time to hear petitions against a legal amendment that limits their own powers. Thousands of Israelis gathered for a rally outside the court in Jerusalem on Monday night in support of the judges. Critics argue that the move will weaken judicial independence and democracy. Supporters of the overall argue that the move strengthens democracy by preventing the court from overturning the actions of an elected government. The Supreme Court, which could take weeks or months to deliberate, is under pressure to strike down the law. If it does so, members of Mr. Netanyahu's government are threatening to ignore the decision and this will lead to a constitutional crisis over who has the greater authority in Israel. At a far-right protest last week, Finance Minister Bezalel Smorich warned the Chief Justice not to dare overturn the reasonableness legislation which affects the basic law in Israel, part of a set of laws that have a key role in the absence of a national constitution. Don't you dare, is what he said. Invalidating a basic law is a deviation from all your authority and will be the end of Israeli democracy, Mr. Smorich declared. I urge you from here not to make a decision that will tear the people of Israel apart. Interesting. This thing is just still going full steam. And there are huge amounts of people on both sides screaming their heads off while this thing plays out. Then, while this is happening, young Israeli Christians are preparing for IDF service. Our young Christians will improve their Hebrew and get to know the Jews and vice versa. We are building the next Israeli generation. Not for long, people, because the Christians are about to leave. But anyway, years ago, Major Shadi Kalu, a regular contributor of Israel Today, recognized the key to greater Christian integration in Israeli society was encouraging young Christians to volunteer for military service. Israel's minorities are not required to join the Jews in physically defending the state of Israel, but... Many, like the Druze, the Bedouins, and a growing number of Christians, are choosing to do so. Christian and Aramaic youth from Galilee, along with the Jews, will study, train, live, and prepare for the next seven months for significant service in the IDF. The young Christians will improve their Hebrew, they will get to know the Jews, and vice versa. We can only hope that they receive good attitude from the religious Jews and that there is actually some open hearts and ears to listen because as I said the Christians are leaving soon let's pray that the message they're sharing and the lives they're living will instigate conversations that will unlock truths hidden in those religious Jewish hearts and turn them to their Messiah Yeshua HaMashiach while there is time so that when these young Christians get taken in the rapture they can take a lot of their fellow friends training with them along that is our desire that more and more will get to know our lord while there is still time then uh, my favorite thing is the 2030 push all the time israel <laughs> expects 30 percent of their cars on roads to be electric by 2030 everything's about 2030 it is a focal point and go watch the timeline videos there's a reason it's a focal point. It is an important number. It is a deadline. It is a target. Israel's expecting a huge jump in electric vehicle use by the end of the decade when nearly a third of their cars will be charged by the power grid rather than using petrol. This will add stress 
to the power grid, accounting for 6% of total demand. It will require a tenfold expansion in battery charging capacity. About 1.3 million cars will be electric by 2030. That is up from 70,000 today, which is less than 2%. They're also going to increase taxes to make up for the loss of taxes because people have gone electric and they're no longer paying tax on fuel. So it's a lose-lose situation in saving the planet and going electric vehicle. But the interesting point here is 2030. Not 2031, not 2028, 2030. Minus seven years. Ta-da! 2023, and you're running out of months. Israeli Knesset members to contest UNESCO declaration of Jericho as the Palestinian World Heritage Site. Seriously, people. A group of lawmakers from the Knesset Land of Israel Caucus conducted a field tour of the Jericho site on Tuesday as the United Nations Educational Scientific Cultural Organization, UNESCO, is expected to vote to approve its designation as a Palestinian World Heritage Site. Israeli Heritage Minister Amichai Eliyahu, Jericho's connection to the Jewish history is clear to any person with a biblical history and knowledge. Caucus Limor Son Harmelech warned that the attempt to declare the site a Palestinian heritage site is an effort to erase Jewish history. There are those who seek to erase the story of the Jewish people. Their efforts are relentless and focused. Jericho was historically known as the keyhole through which the land of Israel was assessed. Son Harmelech said such a designation would not diminish the meaning of Jericho in Jewish consciousness. We know the truth. Our nation knows the truth about what Jericho means. It is part of the bedrock of the history of the Jewish people. This is an eternal truth that no one can erase. The Palestinian Authority is working systematically to erase all ties of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. Will they succeed? No. Does the Bible say it's going to happen? They're going to win. Not the evil people. God. Because there's always, always, for us and for Israel, a but God moment. That the enemies never factor into their planning. But then, when your supreme leader is Lucifer, you're on the back foot already. So, there's that. World leaders announce railway that may bring pilgrims to the third temple. Now, we discussed this whole project that Biden announced up when he was in India and how this rail is going to connect the whole area. And it's amazing that it's really it's something I'm looking into even deeper because we need to look at all the countries it's going to go through, how it's going to work. It's amazing. But now this is one of the news stories that came out the very next day out of Israel. They take on this. It's always interesting to see how the rabbis see these developments and this is now that. Israel will be a central junction in this economic corridor with Israeli railways and ports part of the gateway which will run from India through the Middle East to Europe and back according to the Prime Minister. Now Rabbi Yekutiel Fish who writes a Gula and a Kabbalah blog in Hebrew says for 2,000 years the Jews were living in a reality prophesied by Balaam as a people that dwells apart. Rabbi Fish said, as long as Israel is a nation apart, we can never fulfill our role as a nation of priests in a house of prayer for all nations. Becoming part of a transportation network will help this happen. Hashem is preparing the way for the pilgrims from around the world to arrive at the temple, said Rabbi Fish. Practically, a train is the best means to serve the temple since it can carry many more people without the dangers or traffic jams associated with highways. In Gematria, Hebrew numerology, Rakevet, train, equals 622, precisely the same number as Har Habayit, the temple mount. Interesting. A high-speed rail system connecting Ben Gurion Airport to Jerusalem was completed, with additional branches planned 
including one that will take travelers to the Donald Trump station at a Western Wall point. All these things are already prepped, in place, prepared, and now you link this massive new rail system and connecting system to that whole process. And you've got what they see as a focal point to come into this next temple, but what I see as world leaders and dignitaries and people traveling sustainably, not by planes, on these systems to the central point, Israel, where their Antichrist will be sitting and trying to claim that land as his own. Because the devil doesn't do his own thing. He always wants what's God's. And because God's got his name etched into the very valleys and hills of that place, I can't see why he wouldn't set up shop there and have meetings there and do his most important work, like eradicating Jews and Christians from there. Pray for Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. There is a lot happening and a lot more about to happen right in front of our eyes, right until we leave. God bless. Keep looking up. Shalom.